Denver, capital of the U.S. state of Colorado, is located at 1,600 meters above sea level on a sunny high plateau on the edge of the Rocky Mountains. Since the TV series Denver Clan, this city of gold and oil has become famous all over the world. This fascinating metropolis features glazed office towers and elegant city villas and also a fascinating mountain world in front of its city gates. Colorado State Capitol, located on a hill in the center of the city, crowned by a 76 meter high golden cupola. In front of the building, a native Indian hunting a buffalo. A soldier and a cannon are reminders of the adventurous pioneering days of this city. The Senate has met in Denver since the 9th of September 1861, when they started by arguing about the construction and interior design of this splendid building. No expense was spared for its furnishings. Generous staircases and precious wainscotings of Colorado onyx. A symbol of the riches gained from the local surroundings. It's believed that the entire deposit of pink colored quartz was used here. This rare stone is unique to Beulah and can be found nowhere else in the world. Huge glass windows decorate the shining dome and paintings of the 16 founders of the Senate decorate its interior. The Colorado Senate consists of 35 senators whose term of office lasts for four years. All decisions concerning the 38th US state are made here. A number of brave pioneers once believed that Denver would be an ideal center of trade and despite Indian hostilities and various other hazards, they decided to build a town here. Henry Brown offered his land for the site of the Capitol building. Its construction took 22 years. Directly in front of the Capitol is the Civic Center Park, a large and well laid out area that contains several sculptures and a fountain. This oasis of tranquility within the busy city is extremely popular with the local people. Its beautiful flower beds make this park a feast for the eyes. There are many memorials that commemorate the heroic native Indians who inhabited this land long before the white man arrived. Numerous battles once took place right here in this place of colorful flowers, green meadows and relaxation. Laid out in classic style, in summer it is the pleasantly shady heart of Denver and surrounded by the state's administrative buildings.
on the western edge of the park is the impressive City and County Building. It was built in classic style, from its church clock to its generously proportioned rotunda. All this splendour serves as a reminder that the city's founding fathers gained their prosperity by way of their resolute spirit. And they also paid for the Union Pacific Railroad connection. The railroad company chose Cheyenne to be a junction of transcontinental traffic. Without the railway connection, Denver could not have developed into what it is today. Skyscrapers between the prairie and the Rockies. A somewhat surreal city in which various power industry companies are to be found. A boomtown situated in the mountains. In 1858, gold was discovered at Cherry Creek, the city of Denver originated due to the uniting of three gold prospecting settlements. At the beginning of the 20th century, other American cities already boasted skyscrapers, but Denver limited the height of its building to 38 meters. Today, the skyline of the old town contains some fascinating skyscraper architecture. Modern shopping centres such as the Tabor leave no doubt whatsoever that the two million inhabitants of this city have adapted fully to contemporary life. Denver could also be described as the shopping paradise of the Rocky Mountains. Its inhabitants have everything, and around 100,000 people settle here each year in this fascinating city. The 16th Street Mall is the city's pride. Inaugurated in 1982, it's a splendid avenue that boasts the longest pedestrianized area in the USA. Trees, fountains and sculptures adorn the street, as well as horses and carriages. And there are lots of seating areas and street cafes. Plus, there are several shopping malls, restaurants of all kinds, and shops with product from all over the world. A shopper's paradise. Every 90 seconds, a free bus service travels along this shopping street. A first-class facility that is popular with one and all. The heart of this prosperous city, downtown is full of life. On Arapahoe Street, close to the Northwestern 16th Street, is the Daniels and Fisher Tower. In 1911, William Cook Daniels ordered the construction of a bell tower above his shop. It resembled the Campanile of Venice and was designed to create a good degree of southern charm. The almost 100 meter high tower was legendary when it was inaugurated. 
At that time, it was the third highest tower in the United States. Larimer Square is one block west of Mall and Tower, and the city's historic birthplace. A fine example of restoration. The oldest street in Denver shines out in new splendor, with renovated red brick buildings that date back to the city's foundation. Various French bistros and luxurious shops don't interfere with the originality of this street that was the first in the United States to be declared an historic district. These nostalgic buildings that date back to the 1870s comprise numerous speciality shops, small breweries and cafes. In around 1960, renovation began and the city fathers succeeded in breathing new life into this part of the city that had previously been a slum area. It is said that Western hero Buffalo Bill once lived in one of these houses that dates back to the time of the Civil War. Close to the city is a huge mountain range that is the backbone and water divide of the American continent. It extends from Canada almost as far as Mexico. The mountain peaks of the Rocky Mountains are 4,000 meters above sea level. And it was the glaciers of the Ice Age that created this overwhelming mountain landscape. Compared to the European Alps, these mountains are situated further south, almost adjacent to Spain. And that's why they're covered with trees at high altitude. Above the forests are mountain meadows with splendid flora and also very barren rock. Here, the air is very thin. From Estes Park, we arrive at the main entrance to the park. And from here, a side road leads to Bear Lake, an idyllic mountain lake. Bear Lake Road terminates here. Waterfalls such as the Alberta Fall indicate the power of nature that created this imposing landscape. The Rockies formed during the Ice Age that began around half a million years ago when the riverbeds filled with mighty glaciers. These glaciers created deep U-shaped valleys with smooth slopes and mountain peaks and various lakes. Sprague Lake is one of the region's many glacial lakes. It's ideal for walkers, as well as anglers and boat enthusiasts. Several ranchers offer accommodation. The Rocky Mountains separate the North American continent into two climatically different regions, the humid east and the arid west. In 1859, 
Joel Estes and his son Milton explored for the first time this fascinating mountain world. They were overwhelmed by its natural beauty and huge glacial rivers. A year later, they returned with their entire family and settled here. Surrounded by green forested mountain slopes and snow-covered peaks is the famous winter resort of Aspen that is situated in the valley of the Roaring Fork River. This once important mining town has since been transformed into a popular holiday destination that, in addition to being a summer resort, is well known for its exclusive winter sports facilities. In summer, all is calm and tranquil. But each winter, Aspen becomes a meeting place of the rich and famous from the show business, commercial and sporting worlds. This expensive tourist resort originated around 100 years ago as a camp for silver prospectors and for some years was the most prosperous silver town in America. The region's rugged pioneers have now been replaced by stylish holidaymakers. And a journey by shining horse and carriage is more popular than by taxi. The price of accommodation here is extremely high, but a visit to Aspen and its pretty Victorian buildings is a must. There are also a number of monuments that commemorate the courageous people who first settled in the area. And a cable car travels to the vantage point at the top of the 3,418 metre high Aspen Mountain, where sightseers are rewarded by wonderful mountain scenery. Colorado Springs was founded in 1870. The small town on the eastern edge of the Rocky Mountains was an ideal place in which the wealthy inhabitants of New England and various visitors from abroad could relax. And it still is. There's also a major electronics industry here due to the various military camps that are based in this region. There are subterranean military control centers and also a space control center. Once the gold rush attracted great hordes of prospectors. By 1917, the town had expanded so much that it united with nearby Colorado City. The city's fine buildings make it easy to forget that we're now living in the third millennium. The lovingly restored Old Town brings to mind the old Wild West. Featuring timber-built houses, splendid front gardens and the patriotic American flag. In around 1871 there were 800 settlers and 150 buildings. Tourists came in their droves. The shining red rocks on the outskirts of Colorado Springs are a striking spectacle within the Garden of the Gods, a magnificent setting. The huge red sandstone rock formations rise to a height of up to 150 meters. These natural monuments are a reminder of the geological past of this extraordinary region situated at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. Protected by the rocky terrain, the Ute Indians found this to be an ideal place in which to spend the winter months. The tribe's winter camps existed here up until the late 19th century.
The Ute not only used the Garden of the Gods as a winter camp, but also as a starting point for their journeys through the Ute Pass. The Ute Pass was originally used by the vast herds of bison that travelled from the Great Plains to the mountain meadows of the Rocky Mountains. For centuries, the Ute Indians followed the bison herds on their journeys through the mountain pass that now bears the name of their Indian tribe. The rocks in the Garden of the Gods are silent witnesses to a unique geological development and a true wonder of nature. Back in Denver's center is a building of red sandstone, the Brown Palace Hotel. Since 1892, one of the USA's greatest hotels. Henry Brown opened it for the gold and silver kings, the beef barons and the railroad tycoons. The city was only 34 years old when Brown realized his dream and the timing was perfect, as money itself was not important to wealthy businessmen of those times. It was only there to be spent. This splendid building has survived the ravages of time. In May 1859, Bishop Scott of Kansas, Nebraska, sent two men into the Pikes Peak region to construct a number of churches namely William Good and Jacob Adrans. When they arrived in Denver on the 2nd of August, they began work on the Methodist Church. It's still an impressive building in the style of modern Gothic architecture. The History Museum features Denver's dramatic past. In 1858, gold was discovered at Cherry Creek and the gold rush began. However, it was in ancient times that man's history began here. Native tribes of Asian origin who traveled the ocean-free land that connected with North America. Various discoveries indicate the people of the Ice Age hunted mammoths and buffaloes and killed them with stone-tipped spears. Their cultural development progressed and the hunter-gatherers became farmers who lived in simple earth houses and then later in pueblos carved into rock walls. The tribes of the Anazazi, Navajo and Apaches lived in peaceful harmony with nature and developed their own traditions, culture and religion. But then the white gold prospectors arrived and three settlements made up what later became Denver and Colorado's main city. It had around 4,000 inhabitants. Denver became a boom town when the railroad came here in 1870. The native Indians were forced to make way for those arriving here by railroad and who were attracted by the possibility of turning an easy buck. This once lively village has now developed into a modern city and the former trading arenas for fur, gold and silver have now been replaced by a skyline of glittering skyscrapers. Denver, 
a metropolis situated between the open prairie and the Rocky Mountains.